Hello and welcome to the Voice Extra podcast. Today I am here with com- conservationist, cartoonist and voice contributor, uh, Dan Hodgkiss. So how are you doing today, Dan? I'm all right, not so bad. I've been uh, relegated outside today because of the uh, incredibly noisy washing machine. And hopefully it <laughs> will be activated during podcast. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Um, so yeah, uh, what are we here to talk about today, Dan? Um, my article, The New Normal. Yes. A, on the website, it's called uh, Despite Its Horrors, Society Could Benefit from COVID-19. So could you give us like yeah. a little summary of what this article's about? Well, essentially, it's about step change. This idea that um, societies tend to sort of rumble on at a pretty slow pace until something kicks them uh, <laughs> somewhere uncomfortable and makes them change their minds and start doing things and uh, I th- for that reason broadly speaking I think this crisis will do a power of good to how we innovate things and how we adapt and all that and certainly with climate change it has something good to say. So uh, first uh, I'll start with like the more individual I guess personal stuff um, which is that you yeah. talked uh, in the article about having like a new routine in this time and how has yeah. that kind of changed your days? Uh, I definitely eat a lot more fried food for lunch. <laughs> it's warm <laughs> stuff, which is nice. Probably not that good for me. Um, I definitely sleep better as well, or, or definitely sleep for longer, and that's nice. Because um, I do feel like the, the normal work-life balance of getting up at 7 in the morning to get to work for 9 and all of that isn't really what's good for us so that's positive yeah I, th- I think I think establishing that routine was really important for me- my mental health and sort of how I've, I've dealt with lockdown having something regular that, that makes sense definitely think that resonates with a lot of people have you stuck to your new routine yeah yeah they're very much it's 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 a rigid part of my life now the only thing that disrupts it is if there's some kind of emergency, which there isn't really at the moment, car trouble or something. I was stuck um, in the middle of nowhere for about seven hours wandering around the countryside because my car was being fixed, so that was weird. Um, nice change. Got a very lost. I, end, I possibly ended up in someone's garden. There was there was a weird, like, there was a head shape like a deer, uh, and uh, I felt like uh, if I turned the wrong corner, I would be uh, shot for trespassing. But I did see lots of wildlife, so I was excited. So an actual deer as well as the hedge that was shaped like one. But um, yeah, <laughs> mostly it's it's uh, just vegetating and I do my, my daily wanders and uh, life admin. It's it's not too exciting, but it is coming to an end now because I will actually have to start working in some capacity uh, in September. So that's going to be interesting. My world is going to come crumbling around me. <laughs> All the schedule is going to just disappear. <laughs> I know. So you've talked about like these kind of walks and wonders. So have you discovered anything new or any like new places you didn't really see before? Loads. So um, I didn't have much time to hang about where where I live uh, before lockdown. I mean, I only moved in a couple of weeks before lockdown happened. So that's quite handy timing um so the patch i'm most used to is over the welsh border where i work which obviously haven't had um uh, much access to lately um <laughs> and it's it's been a great opportunity to see what there is about me and i didn't know there was so much i mean i knew there was the the quarry which has sort of grown over and it's, it's a bit of a nature reserve at the moment um but but next to it there's a whole fishing pool with wood around it and a country path because sheer boredom stops me from visiting the same bits every day I've I've just gone left rather than right every day and, and found somewhere new and I've got this whole yeah. green network I didn't know I had and it's really nice and I didn't know it was there and I, I, I've definitely heard other people saying similar stuff that it sort of forced them certainly in the early days of lockdown to explore what, what is local and what, what's good it's oh, nice, nice. Do you think people well. are like, yeah? Uh, do you think people are like appreciating their local environments more because they've kind of had to stay in them? 
totally totally if you, and it's it's given um it's given a sense of scale as well i always struggle with the idea of what what should i what should i focus on as the, the the place i ought to improve does it need to be the reserves that i work with does it need to be my garden my my commute commute like half an hour i can't do all that but if i'm stuck to an hour's radius from my house i can just about manage that i feel like i can make a difference there with letter picking and i don't know just talking to whoever's managing and see if they can do better stuff um certainly people have turned more to their gardens as a result of this and the impact of lower amounts of transport and fossil fuels has has changed the world dramatically in terms of what's about uh, and just but less people moving about uh, wildlife is a lot bolder and people can actually get a chance to see the things that they normally don't get to so i think it's been hugely beneficial for for interest in nature um of course there is a sort of two-headed uh, a double-edged sword to that because you've got the effect of people being in their gardens all the time and not everybody uh not everybody's keen on standing back and letting nature do its thing so it can mean that you have over blitzed lawns and hedges that are streamed within an inch of their life and baby birds having their heads cut off with the uh, over enthusiastic uh, loppers and things like that it's people mean well but i think especially in a time when there's they have so little control over what's happening having something that you can focus your energy and control over has is something that people are going to be drawn to and uh, uh-huh. feel better for doing. So it's um, great for mental health, but I do wonder whether overblitz lawns and stuff like that might have a, a negligible effect on wildlife in, in the long run. But it just depends who you are okay. and what you do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't even think about it that way in terms of like... No, no, it's good. I didn't, I didn't think about it that way in terms of like people almost trying to control their gardens and stuff because that's all they have in that sense. My brother was laughing at me for growing my own vegetables as uh, worrying about these collapse of society. But um, as soon as lockdown (laughs) came into effect, he grows more than me. He's got like this massive plastic pop-up greenhouse and it's like a rainforest in there. Um, and he's completely changed his tune. He's all asking me for tips and things. So it's it's really interesting sort of seeing that. And, and of course, you see everywhere, everyone's growing. Um, uh-huh. More out of boredom than out of fear of societal collapse. But it's, it, but it's, it's really <laughs> nice to see that interest in um, where your food comes from and what it involves and just getting outside, really. Because we, it is yeah, important. That- it's so important to our to our own well-being and because when we're deprived of it we people are going nuts <laughs> and i expect if we get this second wave coming in then um people will start to rebel against that and certainly notice the difference uh so also uh you were talking about uh, in the article like projects you've been working on so what projects have these been ah right well project one was garden stuff so all the veg, um, I, my tomatoes pale in comparison to my brother's attempts, but I do have some of them. Uh, I have a couple of other random vegetables that were donated to me, including a now dead cucumber. I, I tried, it didn't want to live. Uh, two aubergines, so much kale, peas coming out of every direction. And oh yeah, this spud tower, which is made of old tires that I've stacked on top of each other. Because it's a little garden, oh, nice. so I've got to do everything vertical. So if it doesn't grow up, then I've got to plant it in some tires, which I managed to um, uh-huh. I managed to get from a garage before I had to lock myself away from society. So that's one. Um, the other one is the meadow strip. So I've I've lifted up a bit of turf and um, seeded it with meadow seed, and it's turning into lovely, beautiful flowers. And it's it's full of bees and stuff like that. So I'm happy with that. And after that, I made my electrical generator. Um, I have an old bike, um, some pieces of wood, and a scooter motor, electrical scooter motor. And um, essentially, you hook up the the chain to that, and then you can pump energy from the bike 
into a, a car battery. So I did that, and when I've done that, I've just this morning actually set up something else with um, I've got a little solar panel, a little fold out one you can use to jump start your car. Um, but it folds out and it's perfect for the top of my shed. And uh, I'm using it to power a mini fridge, and the, I'm testing it over three days because if it can survive three days, then it means it's it's not eating up more juice than I can give it, which means if I go camping, I can have a mini fridge, which is great. So that's my project so far. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm really running out of stuff <laughs> to make and room in the garden. Uh, I might have to start exercising. It's pretty sad. <laughs> I think that's easy. Honestly, right though, like you bro- you said you're not apocalypse prepping, but a lot of this does sound like apocalypse prepping. I have to say, uh, I kind of am really. I want to have something. In- I, d- I don't know if I told you this story, but like the the second day of of lockdown, uh, I went to cook something in the hob, and it tripped the the fuse. I didn't know it tripped the fuse because it was a dodgy hob. I I genuinely thought, at least for a split second, oh no, the, the power stations have, have bailed. <laughs> Society is collapsing. I was like, I need something to reassure that part of my brain. <laughs> and now I have it. Oh, it was scary. It was scary times. I think grandkids ask me what was lockdown like. It's those first few days that were sketchy. Um, because now it's just almost boring. Um, it doesn't make for much of a story <laughs> like World War Two. But that was that was weird. And uh, yeah, I, that's I guess that's for me. The other thing is it's an exercise bike, and I don't I don't know. I find it very hard to maintain momentum and enthusiasm for these kind of things. But and, and I've always been annoyed by exercise bikes and rowing machines that don't do anything with that energy. Like, why? Yeah, you could be using gyms to power the grid, so I've got one that does it now. And um, when I use it, I don't have to feel like I'm just cycling for no reason. It's doing something yeah. to it. So yeah, um, I'm actually working on a project um, which might make more of these for schools. But um, oh, nice! Know. I'll let you know how that goes. As it, that's my that's my job that's starting in September. But uh, it'll be cool okay. to do that. It does depend on being near human beings, though, to make the things a little bit different. We'll get there. But yeah, so lots of exciting stuff. Actually, that does kind of bring me on to the next thing of about uh, normalizing risk that you were talking about in the article. Um, and do you think this whole situation has made you more or less aware of risks? It's it's definitely um, it's definitely made me more aware of how fragile everything is all this because that was something that, that really hit me like with all the i mean with with um the credit crunch and stuff like that i guess that's the closest we come to like a sort of national crisis during my lifetime i yeah. mean for me all that meant was cheaper ketchup that tasted a bit like vinegar I, there wasn't anything drastically horrible happening in in my life otherwise it didn't it didn't otherwise change what what I considered normal life, and um, yeah, like we all take that for granted as something that will just keep perpetually keep going, um, which is something that's particularly worried me with regard to Brexit and what that's going to do. Um, uh-huh. And this sort of throws it completely out of whack. I mean, actually, you actually you have to do quite a lot to make sure that this works, and um, so now I'm prepping. Uh, <laughs> just in case it doesn't <laughs> anymore. But um, I do think yeah. it'll be good for Britain to, to have had this um, preparation of, you know, mass panic buying, um, even if it is for, for the virus, in a, ahead of what, mm-hmm. what when we have leave the EU, because it is going to be a similar kind of situation. And at least mm-hmm. if we know how to manage that panic ahead of schedule, maybe next time, Nick, well, maybe this time next year we won't uh, run out of toilet roll like we did before. Hopefully, so. that would be good. I would like to have toilet roll next year. I know. I, 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 it was a joke to start with, but you think about the alternatives. I mean, there's only so much a shower can do, um, and I'm not <laughs> sure I'm ready for that. I'm sure it's fine in France, but 
used to a different way of life. <laughs> yeah. Can't make um, that. I can grow vegetables. I can't grow toilet roll. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you could do with leaves. Who could say? <laughs> uh, do you... <laughs> Um, do you think we should be taking more risks, like, in general, as people? Oh, yeah. We've, we've been a completely mollycoddled society for a while. And um, certainly, it's it's really sad that um, the virus hit when it did, because we were starting to see a, a bit of a shift in our educational system. That there was certainly, in, in Welsh government and um, other British governments looking towards working more outside and encouraging more sort of independent thinking. And it was on the cusp of um, becoming more of a mainstream thing. And I do feel that yeah. because of social distancing, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be forestalled until we know how to manage that properly. Cause it isn't just COVID. It's, there's going to be other viruses that affect us the same way. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's clearly something that we benefit from with some kind of risk. Like I, I know that I, I have had a quite privileged childhood in that um, I lived in the middle of nowhere. There was a, there was a wood behind my house that there were no kids anywhere for miles. I could just go and play in, and I, you know, age twelve, I off I went to just play on my own in the woods, and that's not something everyone gets to do i mean yeah some people don't have have a garden at all and i i can't i can't imagine how they sort of worked through the stress of of growing up like that because you, you do need your own space and, you, and it's you need stuff to take you out of your own head um and oh. show you that there's more to the world than bloody uh, a level exams or, or whatever <laughs> it is that's being crammed down your throat it's uh yeah, it's it's something we need more of um, because I know my yeah. risk has has directed what I've done as as an adult and how I've pursued my life. I've I, I've, I've moved from I've moved all over the place for jobs and and certainly people have always been taken about. Oh, you're not local then. I'm from Cornwall and in the Midlands, and that people often expect me to be. A local boy or something like that because because um, uh-huh. there's plenty of countryside around here but for um a job in conservation you've got to go wherever the job is um and yeah. be prepared to take risks that come with it and i know people yeah really capable clever people who because they haven't had that opportunity for risk haven't expanded on that and decided to live on the same street they grew up in and and done a, a job in the same area and it's um uh-huh. yeah it does make a huge difference and i think people can benefit as a whole from having that opportunity i think what this really like shows in a sense is that no matter how safe we try and play it something can just come along to kind of throw everything out of whack so you so, might as well just take the risks well you can yeah with uh, respect to other people's lives obviously yeah keep your mask on (laughs) (laughs) yeah so let's start looking forward like to the future you've uh talked about more people like walking cycling generally having like a better relationship with the world around them do you think that will um improve as time or stay sorry as time moves on or you think it will decrease it all it so depends on the individual doesn't it but I think some things will will change permanently. I'm talking talking mainly about home working, not just because everyone will know how to do it now, but also because it's so much cheaper. If you you think of the amount of offices that exist and are paid for and are a huge drain on resources for energy and rent that they could just outsource to people's homes and they can just provide them with a laptop people are going to start doing that more as a matter of course. I mean, as a matter of course, home working will be a part of your initial training. It will be, without question, a, a, a standard thing. You get hired for a job, you get your, your kit. Okay, here's your home working protocol. We're going to link you up with the LAM, whatever. Um, I think that's going to be that's going to be normal. What that means for yeah. people elsewhere, how we're commuting, you know, are we still going to be feeling as fuzzy about nature? 
when things are back on track will i start cycling to work i don't know but i'm definitely going to have more of a hold on what i can do because i had all this free time to think about it i do i do wonder whether people will um continue to to try and stay on 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 the path we have in in terms of cutting emissions but then um at the same time i'm not as worried about it because of all these government initiatives to to push electric vehicles through so i thought that will kind of go with it so i guess the thing that i want to stay in the public psyche is that engagement with nature and that appreciation for the green spaces that are around us and i definitely think the children who've experienced lockdown will take this forward i can't speak for the adults because i they're just not very good at keeping <laughs> their promises for these kind of things. But I think children will definitely remember this as uh, a really important summer in their lives, definitely. Even for being deprived of kids their own age, having that one-on-one time with your parents and nature, I think, is going to be hugely... Uh, so, Dan, to kind of like uh, finish us off, what are your hopes for the future? What habits and behaviours and stuff like that do you hope we carry forward even as we kind of get used to this new normal? Well, well, first off, I, I hope that people remember this summer as one where they had huge opportunities to sort of connect with their with nature, not just generally, but also within their local patch and what it means for areas around them and that they remember those places that they've relied on for, for lockdown. That's one thing. The other thing is that a lot of these, a lot of the problems that that we faced um, during lockdown, can be tackled by yourself and by working with other people around you. I mean, the, the amount of um, community support groups that have popped up to to help out vulnerable people who can't go shopping has been huge, and it's it's been nice to see a bit of good news coming out of what the British people are doing with their free time. Um, there's definitely been a lot of stuff in the news, certainly in the last few years, that just made me very depressed about being <laughs> a member of of Britain. And um, it's lovely to see good people in our country doing good things. And I hope that's something we don't forget and that we take forward with us, especially with the joy of... Um, political things going on yeah, yeah that, that we can be good that we can that we have the power to change what we don't like and that nature is everywhere around us and it's important that's what i want to see that's a good note to end on i think sweet so if anyone wanted to come to talk to you about this sort of stuff or about conservation or anything else where would they find you that's a very good question uh, they can find me on Dan J Hodgkiss on Twitter. That's the awesome, and D. that will be in the show notes as well. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so, thank you for joining me, Dan. No worries. Thanks for having me. So, you can find Voice at Voice Mag UK on Instagram and Twitter at Voice Extra on the, for the contributors Instagram, Voice Mag UK for all the articles, pieces, uh, interviews, stuff like that. Uh, the other voice mag podcast which is literally called the voice mag podcast um which is interviews with artists and stuff like that and also please um rate and review this spread this round donate to voice all the uh supporty things please because it helps us keep doing this um thank you so much and we'll see you next week bye bye Thanks to Kevin McLeod for letting us use Shaving Mirror. You can find his stuff on incompetech.com.